Brave soul that fears not death, I shall guide you to the fisher, so that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Man, oh man, have I been waiting for a Demon Souls figure for a very long time, and I am really impressed with this figure. I'm excited to get this off the stand and take a look at it, so let's get started. The fluted armor is, of course, the starting armor for the Knight class in Demon Souls, but you can also pick it up in the Prison of Hope. And this action figure version is looking really, really good. I'm impressed with the level of detail that they've included in this figure. If you take a look at the armor, you can see all the embossing, some rivets in the gauntlets there. The belts came out really nice. They've even included the Augit of Souls, I believe this is called, though it's not lighting up like how it does in the video game. There's a lot of layers underneath the armor. You can see some chain mail here and some the pants and the cloth underneath. Looks really good. The pouches came out really nice too. Just look at the detail on the, like the helmet and all the embossing rivets, all that detail, looking really, really good. This armor comes with a lot of accessories, so let's get into them. Alright, so our fluted armor comes with quite a lot of accessories. First we have our broadsword, and we have two versions of it. One is the broadsword uh, out of the sheath, so that he can hold, and one is the sheath version of the broadsword. Next we have our knight sword. We have one knight sword in a sheath and one knight sword out of the sheath. And these things came out really great. They actually have some damage on them, so that looks really, really good there. Here's a look at the knight sword in the sheath. To get either of the sheath swords on, you just need to peg that little tab there into the corresponding hole there. So to get that on, let's see if I can get this on camera. So I just smushed it with my thumb and my index finger, and it holds pretty good. We have two shields, and this is our kite shield, and this is your early game shield, and this is looking really good. It has some scratch marks, some sword indentations there, and a nice little dent there. Maybe like blocking an arrow or something. This came out really good. And we have our dark silver shield that you get from killing Garl Vinland at the Sanctuary of the Lost. And this came out really good. Look at the level of detail they've included in this shield. It looks so good, just like the video game. It could be a little bit darker though, but I think it looks good. On the other side, you can see some engravings, and some markings and some rivets, as well as the handle. We have four pairs of hands. We have our gripping hands, wide gripping hands. We have our narrow closed gripping hands. We have some fisted hands. And what comes with the figure already is the relaxed hands. You get this double peg in order to help you port the shields into the back of the figure. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the long end and then you're going to port that into the hole and it's in the back of the armor. And just get that in as far as you can. Stand up, buddy. And then you're going to take the shield, take the handle off, and then you're going to port with the hole right there into the back. And there you go. You can keep the shield on the back of the armor. Like so. There's a bit of a gap there, but that's okay. Same rules apply for the kite shield, but you can pull the lower piece of the tab off and you can make it shorter so that fits a lot better. To hold the shield, you're first going to remove the handle, and then you're going to get the gripping hand. And this handle comes apart again, this way. And then you're going to slide one side of the handle through the gripping hand, like so. And then you're going to take the other side and just Peg it into the top part, like so. And then you're going to port that into the shield, like that. And then peg the hand onto the figure, like so. And there you have the shield. 
on the hand. I mean, you can turn that kind of whichever way you want, but... The Dark Silver Shield does not have a part similar to the Kite Shield where it breaks off there. It doesn't. It's just one flush piece. So you port the hand in there, and then you port the pegs back in. And then you put the hand in to the figure. Just be careful when you're doing this that you don't break anything. Make sure everything is lined up. And port that in so that he holds the shield like so. For our two swords, the handles do come apart. So if you want to get the knight sword on, you need to pull apart there. And then you can get one of your gripping hands. And slide handle through the hand, like so, and then pop the upper part of the sword on, go ahead and tab that in, and you can hold your sword. For the broadsword, the bottom comes off, and then you would go ahead and port that in and port the knob back on and then you would be able to hold your broadsword. If you're like me and you like to play Soulborn games using strength builds, we have the Meat Cleaver, and this thing came out really good. Look at all the damage that's done to it, and all the paint and weathering. I think this thing came out really, really good, looking exactly like it does in the game. Very large, obnoxious strength build sword. And then we have our large sword of moonlight if you wanted to go a more intelligent build this thing came out really good it's glossy shiny I like the transition of paint and the gold and the detail on the handle looks really really good to get our larger swords onto our armor we want to make sure that we're using the hand that has the larger hole. I'm going to take the end off the meat cleaver, slide the hand on, put the end back on, and then with this particular hand the hole is on an angle so be very very careful when you're porting this into the figure. You do not want to snap the, the wrist peg there. So make sure you're porting in on an angle. Like so, you want, if you want, you can heat that up with a hair dryer or something. And then we can hold our obnoxiously large meat cleaver for the Sword of Moonlight. Same thing applies, you just pull the end off, slide the wrist or hand over top of that, close it off with the knob, and he can hold the Sword of Moonlight like so. If you prefer running around and punching everything in the face, this also comes with the iron knuckle. And the detail came out really good on the iron knuckle. The paint came out good. There's some nice weathering and some damage done to it. So that looks really, really good. To get the iron knuckle on, it just works like how the shields work. You pull the handle off and then you pull it apart like so. You use the larger hand, slide one end in, and then close that off port it into the iron knuckle base like so and then you would just put that on the figure like so and then you have your iron knuckle he also comes with a standard Figma stand and as well as an extra ball peg for the wrists in case you break one. All right, let's get into the articulation for this guy. So we have a head that can move up this much and look down that much. It also looks to the left and to the right, but the scarf does get in the way. The neck can also tilt side to side. The shoulder armor pegs in to small little pegs in the back of his shoulder. They give you some movement, 
so I don't recommend that you force any shoulder movements. When you go to make a shoulder movement, just make sure that these are out of the way. So with that, our arms can come up to about that much. And I wouldn't go past that because you're going to end up just snapping the shoulder armor off there. They do rotate forward about that much. And they can go back about that much. There is a bicep swivel that works very well. We have double jointed elbows and we have wrist joints and then if you rotate that you can go in and outwards. Because of the way that armor is designed you can't really do the praise the sun pose. You get about forward and back motion this much and this much and you get rotation side to side as well as side to side bending. You can lift up the torso a little bit so you can get even more range but then you'll get this gap in the back of the figure. The waist armor is just free floating so it's kind of all over the place there. The legs can kick up about that much and they can go back about that much. There is a drop down method so dropping down the, the leg gives you a little bit more motion. There is a double jointed knee and there is a thigh cut at about the midway point and the ankles move up down. They can turn inwards, turn outwards, and we have toe articulation. You can get down and pose up quite nicely. Finding stuff in my collection that would scale well with this figure was a bit difficult. Here he is next to some Kulu World skeletons. Here he is next to a Mythic Legions Barbarian 1.0. And here it is next to a Figma Link. It does not scale very well with my custom Mezco Barbarian. So my thoughts on this figure and whether or not you should buy this. I think this figure is pretty much reserved for those of you who are hardcore Demon Souls or Soulborn series fans like myself. The price point was around 155 Canadian dollars and that might be enough to deter you from a Figma figure. I am very happy with it and I'm pleased to have it in my collection, so if you're somebody who likes the games, go ahead and pick this guy up. If you found this review helpful, hit that thumbs up and the subscribe buttons. Head on over to Instagram at plastic.life with a Y to check out some of my toy photography. And always remember, this is your collection, so just buy whatever you like. I hope to catch you in my next review. Take care.